All right. Today I thought I'd make a little video about the update uh, for Seiken Arena that's out. I wanted you to get some information before you guys started flying into it and uh, maybe not understanding it, the whole concept of it, and some areas that uh, I I see what's wrong with it. And I've been following Kickstarter forum about this subject and giving feedback and so forth and a lot of the feedback and uh, again I just uh, I, I want to pass this on like I said before you guys get really really into it and think oh because uh, I don't want you wasting your fleets uh, eventually and I'll, I'll go into it some more okay anyway again this week's update uh, includes the for Forsaken Arena and I'm going to go over that there's three new uh, prizes that were entered that's going to be in the mission starting tomorrow. Uh, this one, Radiation Suppressor. This is a another module, blueprint module that you can attach uh, to your buildings and stuff. Uh, it suppresses uh, radiation. So as you read it, you know, so you get a radioactive defense of 30%. You know, it's kind of like lead panels. At, at what point, what you're not gonna, you know, you're not getting hit by, you know, launchers every single time. So re reality is, is, to me personally, I'm never gonna use this. I think it's stupid. Um, I mean, you get hit by berserkers. You get, you know, you get hit by different things. UAVs are the pop most popular thing right now, and so forth. So, uh, and power consumed to 582. So again, it's your choice to put it on your turret if you want to, uh, or your uh, or your buildings or something. Now you could put it on, say, like an oil rig or something, and have it in your channel, and then that would help. But again, it's all about the power consumption. You don't get a whole lot, so it's really a balancing act. So. I don't know. We'll see how it plays out when it comes, you know, later on. Maybe they'll have a combo. Who knows? New strike missile. Strike missile again is the lowest form of the Drakian uh, missile. This one's actually not bad. You know, damage-wise, 140 to 80. Reload time is three sec seconds. It's got a range of 72, which is pretty good, and it's got a penetrative defensive by bypass of 20%. Okay. Uh, the only reason why you're going to use this, it really and honestly, is if you're building a, a Mastodon or a missile fleet where, let's say you put, you know, the, the, uh, the Z or the Achilles B or something on there, which is a lot heavier, so forth, uh, but you need, you know, two or three of the strike missiles on there to help with flak evasion. You know, to help uh, with the coax turret or flak turret or uh, phalanxes. So that's you know that's the only reason why bigger guys do something like that. So, but it's got some you know little decent stats. Weights of twenty, you know, not it's not too bad. One twenty. So again, that's for missile fleets. Uh, certain types of missile fleets, how you're going to use it. So strike missile D fifty one B. It's not going to be a primary use missile for you guys. So, again, uh, Vortex Torpedo D61Z. Uh, again, you know, I'm not using it. I mean, granted, it's got a range of 75, reload of three and a half seconds, accuracy is 75, damage is 175. Uh, it's not that great. Uh, it's got, you know, missile damage. What I can see is with these two, these are not, and if they're in tier four, I'll be surprised, which more than likely they're probably going to be in tier four. Uh, really, and honestly, tier three is probably the place where I would stick these two because they're not top end uh, weapons. What it looks like, guys, uh, based on this, and we'll have to wait and see what happens after the raid next month, what they're bringing out. They're they're not bringing out big heavy duty stuff right now. If you notice, it's 
it's stuff that okay I can utilize it if I want to it's not that big of a deal that I have to have this um, so hopefully something like this can continue and I'll slow some things down a little bit in, in the concept uh, okay and then there's some bugs and fixes tuning okay that's you can read all that I know you guys read it but I just kind of wanted to highlight that a little bit okay the arena which came out today in the update that's up here okay all right I did the first 10 first 10 they give you for free basically you go in you can take your fleet into the battle uh, and you are at that point uh, you're when you're done with the battle your fleet will be fully uh, healed afterwards so it's 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 a trial and error period as you want to call it so you get 10 of them um, so here's what I did and like I said I've been following the, the forms on it so forth and so on and this is my determination first of all my biggest thing is I think it's gonna be bro it's broke already uh, from the get-go and it just I, I for me I can't see me doing it ever again. I think it's stupid, uh, and this is why. The first five, I took my sting race. Just I, you know, I played around with it. It wasn't trying to get anything or uh, trying to uh, achieve anything except to get used to it, to see what it was all about, and see what truly. Okay, and that's this. First five, I put I put my sting race in. Lost all five battles. Actually, take that back. I, I won one. Um, you're mat. You're not matched up with, you know, like right now, like you would not be matched up in your first ten. You would not be matched up with me with my rating because I've already finished my ten. I have my rating. You're not going to. So you're going to be matched up with people that are just starting out. Okay. Uh, with my raise, I ended up we get subs twice. Uh, one set of specs, one set of Phantom Nighthawks. I also ended up against a poor little guy. I felt sorry for him. Uh. Five Marauders. Felt quite bad for the kid. Uh, and then the other two, uh, one of them was an actually pretty good fleet of Tridents with uh, uh, UAVs on it and, some, and something else that had some strike missiles on it. And actually the UAVs just lit me up, so uh, I don't have a lot of missile stuff on my rays anyway. But I mean, I almost got him, but still a loss. I forgot what the fifth one was. And then I took my Phantom Nighthawks in to the other five. Again, same situation. I ended up with two subs. The other three I felt sorry for. One was a Mercury fleet, one was a BC fleet, one was an NC fleet. I took them out with no, with, with such ease. So, uh, and then the sub fleets, one was Kudas, I took them out. The other one was Phantom Nighthawks, and we, you know, he took me out. Uh, uh, and you know with him taking damage too but it, I mean it was a good fight so here's what I think of it after each one I got some veteran vet, uh, VXP veteran experience points the amount of veteran experience points I got I could have hit cargo and took no damage it, it just didn't see, seem worth it I did get the one rogue crew that they you get for free for winning a you know um, your first you know your first win of the day you get a free road crew saw no uranium or anything like that so I think that's later on like now I, I guess I have a chance for uranium and so forth and so on um, so really and honestly I, I see this becoming nothing more than a sub sub arena um, you know arena is strictly for subs and sub killers um, I mean, at this point right now that I can go in, I, there's no sense in me going in there. I can hit cargo with my Phantom Nighthawks, rank them up, and okay, no big deal. And I fleet the fleet with them on the world map, so not sure why I need an arena for it. Uh, same thing with any of my, uh, there's no way I'm taking my NCs, my Atlas, or my Stingrays, or anything like that, because you have no idea what you're matching up against, and it's not worth, worth it, because at this point, the max... I'm going to get is 25% of my health back if I lose my fleet. If I have more than 75% health, then I'm, 
I, I believe it goes to full health. Um, over here on the right, you'll see about this right here, talking about uranium. You can spend 2,500 uh, uranium on their arena. And what it does, for three matches, it'll give you automatic health uh, back. Uh, problem with this is, and I'm not going to spend the uranium. Uranium is a commodity right now. It's got a lot of value. Why in the world am I going to spend it on this? Granted, even then, I could... If I win all three matches, I get a percent of it back. To me, it's just, I mean, mind-boggling and stupid. Um, now, this, I've already found, uh, so did someone else, I already figured out how this is going to be exploited. Okay, and here's how it is. So right now, I'm a veteran lieutenant. If I was to go into here with my fleet, I could lose that combat rating. I can lose some if I lose, if I lose the... Uh, get defeated. So let's say I lose 11 points. What's to say that I don't take a set of gunboats in for 10, 20 combats and knock my combat rating back down? So then now I take my bigger fleets and go through a whole process with them and just keep doing that. It's kind of like metal dumping. So to me, kind of stupid. Now, obviously, you could do that. Like I could do that right now. I could take a, you know, I could take a whole fleet of gunboats in, and lose as much as possible to get my ratings back down to almost nothing, and then take my, you know, take my fleet, go back in. But everyone's going to end up doing that. So, systems broke already. Just letting you know. Um, like I said, after your first ten. Honestly, when it comes to your big major fleets, guys, I don't see it. I mean, especially if you're taking, you know, 12 hours of damage. Granted, you get 25% of it back, but 12 hours of damage for one one fight, and you get defeated, and you get a veteran experience point of say 60. You just waste. You just wasted your fleet. In all honesty. Yeah, you might get lucky and get matched up with five marauders. But once you get done with your first ten, unfortunately, I don't see any use for this. Uh, you might, you guys might think of something different. Might think it's different. Um, and so forth. Again, I'm not spending any coins on this thing. This is just, you know, this is ridiculous and stupid. Um, it seems like the guys that are that did the preview server for this and tried it out uh, or even commenting saying nothing was changed they made the comments about the subs they made the comments about other different things and yet nothing nothing it just it came right out exactly how they saw it in, in the preview server so personally guys like I said the first 10 were fine and great I mean it was cool but because I got 100% health coming back alright guys I hope that helps you with that. If you got any questions on it, let me know. Um, so, it, oh, well, there, I just figured that out. So, there's, you can scroll over this little bar right here and it'll tell you what, what your rating, uh, your next rating is going to be. So, at 1290, once I go above that, I move up. If I go below 1210, I move down. So, there you go. You can figure out where that's at, guys. Um, again, your fleet has to be 100% health to be able to do this. You can load your uh, road crew into your dock. You come up here, you select it. So, like for an example, it says raise is unavailable because the road crew is on it. So you come here, you select that. There you go. Cue your match, and then you're and you're off about and about doing your own thing. Okay. So again, I hope that uh, helped you understand it. So um, okay, another quick thing I wanted to touch base on, and that is this. Um, you know, I've had some issue with it. It obviously it sounds like Painter had some issue uh, a week or so ago, some, and everything. And dug around, talked to a few people about it. Um, okay, let's say you're getting ready to log off for the night, and you start a build, whether it be a ship build, a repair, an upgrade, something. I don't get, care what it is. And you're in your base. Before you log out, go to the world map. 
And there's a reason why I'm about to tell you. 